In our previous video, I covered special triangles on a mathematical level, but in this video, I want to explain how they can actually help in real-world situations. So for this example, let's say we're building a roof and we're building some rafters. We need to build the rafters and construct them and design them. There's plenty of options in terms of the dimensions and angles that you can use to build your roof. However, we could use our knowledge of special triangles to make our decisions easier, uh, less stressful, and our measurements more precise. So in, in total, we're going to be saving a lot of time and effort and eventually, arguably, saving a lot of money uh, by using special triangles in our construction of this roof. For example, we have the 45-45 triangle where we know these two measurements are 45 degrees. It's a right triangle. If we double that, right, assuming that we have a perfectly symmetrical roof, right, which I assume most people are going to want. We know that the proportions of a 45-45 triangle are x, x, and then x squared to 2. Now, the reason why I'm not going to use this special triangle, however, is because there's a little bit too much steepness. So instead, what I want to use is the 3-4-5. We don't quite know the angles, but don't worry, we're going to use trig towards the end of this video to find those angles, angles A and angles B. Now, before I move on to the angles, I want to talk about these sides. So the 3-4-5 triangle is known for having these perfectly proportional sides with whole numbers, completely whole numbers. Uh, and what's, a, uh, what's very special about this and helpful with construction is we can scale these numbers to larger or smaller numbers. Uh, so, for example, we could translate this 3-4-5 triangle into a 6-8-10 triangle. And we could continue. We can make it a 9 12, 15 triangle, or an 18, 24, and um, 30 triangle. We could use these measurements for any right triangle. And like I said, we want this roof to be symmetrical, so all we have to do is the math one time, and then we just have to duplicate it twice so that we could get one half of the roof, and then we could get the other half of the roof. And the wood planks would look something like this. Now I'm going to scale this up dramatically so you can see what's going on here. We don't have a perfect fit, okay? So this is, this is even though it's on a whiteboard, very real world. You buy the three planks and you think they're just going to fit together, not necessarily. We have to somehow cut some form of a piece off the corner of each end of this diagonal, of the hypotenuse, because then we'll be able to fit those... Uh, the hypotenuse snugly onto the bottom plank, right? Again, this is all just a rough draft, but these are real world problems that you'll come across that a lot of math problems neglect, right? A lot of SAT, ACT, or even in school math problems will neglect. So in order to understand the cut that we have to make, we first have to find the actual angles in this triangle. So the 40-45 and the 30-60 triangle uh, involve the angles within the triangle. However, the 3, 4, 5, we don't know those angles, angles A and B. But we can use trigonometry to help us. Let's find angle A using trigonometry. So sine, cosine, or tangent can all be used to help us find these angles. We just have to pick one. Let's just use sine. The equation that we can use with the sine function is going to be the sine of angle A equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. This is a trig identity, all right? This is referencing SOCA-TOA, a very popular trig function, trig identity. Uh, and we know the values of the opposite and the hypotenuse. So when we plug in these numbers, we have the opposite, which is uh, four. Again, this is opposite to the A value. We're focusing on the angle A and the opposite side of angle A is the 4 value, right? The opposite of A is 4. And then the hypotenuse of the whole triangle is 5. Now we have sine of A equals 4 fifths. In order to actually find the value of the angle A, we have to do, uh, we have to utilize the inverse sine function. That's the sine to the negative 1 power. Negative 1 power. And this is all in your calculator. In fact, I could even show you how to do this on your phone. When we have the inverse sine, we're going to be canceling the sine function on the left-hand side. That's why we use the inverse sine. But enough of the math. Let's just get to the final answer. 
A is going to equal the inverse sine of 4 fifths. You see, that's where we apply that inverse sine function to. We apply it to the right-hand side of the, uh, of the equation. Now, this simplifies to approximately 53.1 degrees. Instead of A, I could write 53.1. Now, on a larger scale project, you're going to want to involve as many decimals as possible for your degrees, your degrees. Now, but typically, uh, the tenth or the nearest hundredth is acceptable. Now, let's talk about angle B. This is where the value that we get for our final answer is going to be a little bit different. So find the measurement of angle B. For, for sine, we could do sine of B equals opposite over hypotenuse. Notice how this time my opposite is 3. If we're focusing on the B value, the opposite side is the 3. Okay, so for this angle, it's 3 fifths, and that's going to be approximately 36.9. Now for cosine, we have cosine of B equals the adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 4 over 5, giving you the same number, just so you can see it with the tangent uh, trick function, tangent of B would be 3 fourths, so B would be the inverse tangent of 3 fourths. Okay, so it's the same process here. Once you have those angles, you can utilize those values for the angle that you need to cut your, your hypotenuse on the ends. Let me draw a diagram to show you that. So we had these three boards, again, completely you know, blown up here to emphasize the issue. We don't have a flat surface here on these two corners. We have to cut this section and this section here so that we could get it perfectly flat, vertically and horizontally. Now, I'm going to draw this triangle here on the inside. You see this blue triangle here represents my 3, 4, 5. So you would have determined whatever values you want to use, 6, 8, 10, 3, 4, 5, 9, 12, 15, so on and so forth. That's going to be your values right here on that blue triangle. Now, what we determined is that this angle up top was uh, 50, what was it? Let's see. 53.1. This other angle, angle B, was 36.9. So, what you need to do for this plank that is sticking out, the hypotenuse, is you need to cut the opposite angle on the opposite side. Uh, so this vertical angle, for example, right here, up top, that needs to be cut the 36.9 degrees. Let me draw this diagonal plank. You need to cut that off at the same angle as angle B. Okay. A lot of people might think, oh, I'll just cut it off by the same angle, 53.1. That's how I get it to match. But not necessarily, because what you're doing, what you're doing is you're taking away from the perfect right angle that the plank is at. You see, the plank is already at a perfect right angle. That's a right angle. Now you're taking away a value that should give you the hard work that you found, the 53.1 that you got from the hard work. So that's why you need to take away the 36.9. Because if you see 90 minus 36.9, you plug that in the calculator, you're going to get 53.1. So understand you're taking away the opposite value. And that's what I mean uh, as I say opposite value. Looking at the horizontal path, let me use my black marker for that section. For the horizontal path right here, this cut, you want to use 53.1. You need to cut this off by an angle of 53.1. Again, 90 minus 53.1 is what's going to get you the 36.9 that you need to have in your perfect 3, 4, 5 triangle. Once you make, the, once you make those cuts, you're going to have the same two planks here for the vertical and horizontal, but now you're going to have a snug fitting hypotenuse. And your goal 
is to maintain those measurements of three, four, and five. So when you're done making those cuts, make sure you do have the three, four, and five. It's not gonna look like how I have it drawn because I'm expanding these planks so much. You're not gonna be cutting planks this thick, all right? This isn't proportional to size, but I want you to see the small little, little uh, details, the small little moments and mistakes that could be made if you're not careful with your measurements. Again, if you're using a bigger scale or if you want to be very accurate, you could take those angle measurements and move them to the hundredth or maybe even the thousandth. So let me show you how to make that calculation using your cell phone. So here I am on the default calculator app on an Android. Now this will work on Android or iPhone. The, the buttons just look a little bit different. So turn your phone sideways. It will give you more options, more buttons to press. This will be the first page of buttons that you'll see. And to access the extra page of buttons, you're going to have to press this button here with the arrows. Now, like I said, on the iPhone, it's a little bit different, but there's going to be a button that allows you to see more options. So once you find that button, uh, you'll have the negative one power to all of these trig functions that we were working with. Go ahead and click one. Click the sign, for example. Now, for our work, we had to use four-fifths to find the angle A, right? And so we'll do four divided by five. All right, just press the division symbol to represent a fraction. Click enter, and that's how I got 53.1. And this works for all the trig functions. So basically, you, you press the function first, and then you plug in your fraction. Now, I believe for the iPhone, you have to set up your fraction first, and then you hit the trig button. So then you would hit the sine button or the cosine after. But that's how you use your phone to get all these calculations. You don't need a fancy calculator to do this at home if you're doing a DIY project. There are links below in the description to my other math videos, including special triangles and trigonometry. So thank you for supporting, subscribe, and have a great day.